your compassionate father I choose kindness I will be kind to the poor for they are alone kind to the rich for they are afraid and kind to the unkind for such is how God has treated me for the Lord your God is gracious and compassionate he will not turn his face from you if you return to him the Lord the Lord the compassionate verses like these make it clear that God the Father is full of compassion for us he really cares and he feels that caring toward you and me that is a very radical thought if you think about it compassion simply means with passion but consider the implication of these three words God passion you your heavenly father is not mechanical in his love for you he feels it I was in the Philippines with a mission team during college in one village we came across a boy with leprosy he was shunned by all and untouchable but the gracious pastor of the teeny evangelical church reached out with his hands he was the only one willing to embrace the grotesque face the stumps for hands and the disfigured legs but I will never forget the morning I came around the corner and found this little boy sitting in the lap of one of my teammates, Randy. Randy had taught him how to pay, play patty cake. As he stumps his palms, the distorted face burst into a twisted but pure smile and I saw a visible picture of the compassion of God with one big twist I am the boy sitting in the lap of God Father sending your son to suffer for me was the ultimate form of compassion let me see myself as the leprous child on your lap thank you for loving me with a passion only you could master for loving me to wholeness please help me to see the world through your eyes so i may also show your compassion to the world amen hallelujah amen grace is good don't judge me i made a lot of money we are constantly bombarded and judged in the world because of our performance our appearance and our possessions although it's never really said outright you earthly value is based on all of these things without them you are nothing God deals with us in no such a way because he is love our acceptance is based on something entirely different then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name the Lord and he passed in front of Moses proclaiming the Lord the Lord the compassionate and gracious God slow to anger abounding in love and faithfulness maintaining love to thousands and forgive wickedness rebellion and sin he is gracious that's the God we call father his grace changes the rules on all things he lavishes his best on us even though we have done nothing to deserve it 
for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and this not from yourself it is a, the gift of God not by works so that no one can boast what can you say to that how do we respond to such a love God thank you so much for holding us to a different standard than the world releasing me from the constantly changing expectations that are unachievable is revealing help me to focus on your gift a salvation I cannot earn and find worth in that above anything else Amen God's patience toward you Lord give me patience and give it to me now I mentioned a couple weeks ago that people often build their view of God based on what their earthly father are like whereas many of us have great loving that some people have a father figure who is constantly mad at his family perhaps we went stressed from other parts of his life onto the nearest and least resistant source or maybe he holds the people nearest to him to <coughs> ridiculously high standards and reacts irrationally when they aren't met regardless of the source angry dads can lead people to think that god the father is like their father angry at every and everything lacking the wants too that's not only wrong but contradictory to what the bible tells us god re revealed himself to moses as the father who is slow to anger david sang of the father with words like this the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abandoning in love. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. God the Father is patient. I am learning this one the hard way. I have done some basketball coaching over the years. Back when my son Liam was just a little guy in elementary school with years of learning ahead of him. I am embarrassed by how often I expected him to be where I was when I played in college. I would see what he was doing, expect something else, deal with him in coach lingo and see his eyes well up with te tears. Oh, how I sometimes wish it was God coaching that team and not me. I was impatient with him, expecting him to be what he could one day be then. God knows our weaknesses, how he knows how we have been made and he gives us slack when others might us might just cut us off amazingly he sees us as we are in christ and knows full well who he is shaping us to become he recognizes the process of development and growth and is truly patient with us as we trudge along the path i don't know about you but i am truly happy we have a father like that 
Father, your patience is long, deep, and loving. I don't deserve such an act of caring, so thank you for caring enough to act like that toward me. I pray this patience would be shown in my life as I interact with others so they can see what you have done in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Giving credit where it's due. Knowing in the biblical sense is a very intimate thing. It impels a actually experience. It is not just head knowledge, cerebral ascent, or muscular posing. In John 8, part 32 says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You participate, you experience life and make it bio, uh, biographical so you, your theology becomes your biography. The past few weeks we have been looking at several different aspects of how who, God the Father is talking about what he wants to do in your lives about how you wants us to act towards him these are definitely important things to have in your head but the book doesn't stop there it's one thing to know all of these things in your head to know this about God but what a tragedy it would be if we never go further than this God's revelation causes a response in the heart of those who are sensitive in his leading when Moses received God's revelation he saw himself in proportion to the God he now knew and how did he respond Moses bowed to the ground at once and worshipped he saw that God is praised worthy Moses praised God with his whole being it wasn't just something he knew in his head he was experiencing God in a radical way getting to know him personally not only does praise put us in our place and God in his it also changes our hearts and depends our experience of a spiritual intimacy with the creator after Moses praised him, God began to make himself known to others through Moses. God had revealed himself as father. Moses saw himself as a child and together they walked toward in truth in the glory of God. Father, whenever I get the chance to learn more about you, I pray that you take what I am putting in my head and move it to my heart. Make this real in my life. I want to radically experience you every day. I love you and you are worthy of all my praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Focus on you. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Fathers can be busy people. Oftentimes they have jobs that will require all their attention, energy and time. Sometimes they will make time for hobbies, golf and the weekend binge of TV football leaving other parts of their life like their kids neglected and forgotten. God has not 
only billions of people to interact with, but he also has the rest of the universe to play with. Chances are that the inner workings of a solar system are way more interesting than anything we have to capture God's attention. And yet, what does the Bible tell us about God's attitude toward us? The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. Because God is God, He doesn't get sidetracked. He doesn't get distra uh, distracted. He doesn't get bored. He has everything He needs right now. He won't leave you give up on you or go somewhere else. He is faithful. Do you get that? think about it because no human being is like that my dad is a faithful man in fact I know what I am going to say about him at his funeral one day he was faithful in his savior to his bride and to his colleague we were fortunate to have the kind of human faithfulness in our family but compared to God, that faithfulness is minuscule. God never changes, never flounders, never turns his back. When we believe in his faithfulness, peace and relief descend on our fearful souls. He is not going anywhere. He, is, he will keep his promises and he will follow through, through with his pronouncements. This makes the faith walk possible and logical. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Father, thank you for your incredible faithfulness and for being the constant in my life. Help me take a heart the promise of your presence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The big hitter. Alas, how difficult it is not to betray one's guilt by one's look. Guilt is here and heavy, like a lead anchor strapped to our feet, our sins both big and small from the past can submerge us in the ocean of shame. This has made some of us sincerely believe that our sins are unforgivable by man, which is probably true, and sometimes even by God, which isn't true. We can end up with a nation that God doesn't want to forgive us, or worse yet, that he won't forgive because we, uh, what we did was so shameful that we can't even bear to think about how we failed him. And yet, like so many times before, we know from the Bible that God is quiet, uh, the opposite, forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. God the Father forgives the one who truly believes in Him. He forgives everything and does so completely. He is forgiving. You might need to let that soak in for a moment. The Bible is a description of the forgiving character of God. The New Testament shows you the person that He has chosen, Jesus Christ. It also shows you the method, the crucifixion and resurrection. It's 
all because he is a forgiving father God I am not worthy of your love and much less of your forgiveness because of my sin thank you so much for having compassion for being gracious for being patient with me you not only look past my sin but save me from it thank you for your forgiveness I believe in it amen my dad is a faithful man in fact I know what I am going to say about him at his funeral one day he was faithful to his savior to his bride and to his colleague we were fortunate to have that kind of human faithfulness in our family but compared to God that's faithfulness is minus uh, scale God never changes never flounders never turns his back when we believe in his faithfulness peace and relief descend on our fearful souls he is not going anywhere he will keep his promises and he will follow through with his pronouncements this makes the faith walk possible and logical and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age father thank you for your incredible faithfulness and for being the constant in my life help me take to hear the promise of your presence Amen, hallelujah, amen. The absolute necessity of justice. Everybody wants to see justice done to somebody else. In some families, fathers punish their children in ways that are not right or fair. Maybe he is too harsh on his child for a small mix-up in the house or maybe he punishes them by denying something that gives them pressure for no good reason earthly fathers can misuse the power given to them and if we apply these imperfections to our concepts of God we will question his authority motives and even his right to punish if anyone should have been inclined to think that God is unfair it would have been job he lost everything he had yet still kept his cool and stood by his innocence his friend helped to make sense of it all by affirming God's fairness he repays everyone for what they have done he brings on them what their conduct deserves it is unthinkable that God would not do wrong that the mighty would pervert justice God loves his people but that doesn't erase the fact that he is also fair he is perfect so everything he does is right and good meaning that he cannot overlook sin he is just we can thank him that justice was satisfied on the cross that hardy day when Jesus paid the price for our sins so we could be forgiven that act of sacrifice allows God to be both loving and fair if we are in Christ the punishment for our sins falls on Christ but for those who refuse this gift his punishment and judgment will be swift and just it's unpopular but it's true without an awareness of God's holy justice we would have complete mayhem in our world and total uh, 
subjectively in our relationship with him father don't let earthly injustice taint my perspective of you give me eyes to see the cross as the historical place where your power and justice and love came together perfectly for me amen hallelujah amen